and we're on to the first game. This is good. We've been playing a lot of uh, very highly ranked Masters players over the last two drafts. I think we've been playing mostly top, a lot of top 100, top 50 um, draft players. And I like that a lot uh, because they typically draft better decks and uh, more, better and also more cohesive decks. And um, I think it uh, increases our chances of having good, fun, interactive games. Uh, I hope nobody here gets power screwed and we get to have a good... Oh dear, that's a strong turn one play. And I hope nobody gets power screwed and we get some good games going here. Yeah, we'll play this for no value. Um, it's better than playing the Awakened Student. And well, I guess it doesn't really matter. If Red's killing it, it's doing three damage. So it makes no real difference if I'm doing it on turn two or turn three at this point. Uh, easy snap block. Um, we don't want him to have more Warcry triggers for sure. Um, yep, let's do this. So if he attacks, we're not going to block. Uh, the idea is next turn, we will play the uh, Amber Acolyte, fetch a land, and then uh, make this into a 4-4, and then uh, we can start trading and raising, raising him. Trading damage. Yep, definitely take the 3 here. Our hand's quite good. Um, oh, mm, in that case... I might just go ahead and time schedule now and then play the Enlightened Stranger. And then on a following turn, another thing I can do is I can play... Well, I don't need to play the Beckoning Lumi because I'm not getting any life at the moment. So I think that's fine. Only choice is playing the Amber Acolyte first or playing the Enlightened Stranger first. Because playing the Enlightened Stranger now, it's a 2-2. Whereas if I have another land, it becomes a 3-3. Three, three. That's an interesting decision to make. Because if I play it now, the Enlightened Stranger can't block anyway. I'm going to not attack him anymore. Um, and maybe hold back the Scorpion Wasp, if, if that's better. Yeah, let's just let's just do this. We'll grab our uh, we'll grab another land. Um, with the intention of playing Enlightened Stranger next turn in a land right away. So that's a 3-3. Um, and then this will be a 5-5. Five, five. So the, the idea here is I can block his 3-3 three, three with my 4-4 four, four and trade his 3-2 with my 2-1 um, and hope that he doesn't have a trick. Oh, deadly. That's unfortunate. A very good skill to have. And it's a 3-3-2 three, three, because of the Warcry trigger off of the Omni here. So, yeah. Let's just continue to, with our plan. Um, now we can't attack him at all because, you know, it has deadly. But the good news is the longer we wait, the stronger our units will get naturally just from drawing lands. Um, and his units aren't getting any stronger. At some point, we do need to find a way to get rid of this thing, though, and trade one of our good units for it, unfortunately. We don't have too many removal spells in our deck. Just pretty much slay uh, Predator's Instinct, which is... Use killing this with Predator's Instinct is a bad trade. It's always a two-for-one in my disfavor. Um, and then the Envelop, that's pretty much it. I don't have any other ways to do it. Oh, right, I'm not getting any more lands. Um, if I swing with the 5-5, five, five, he can kill it with uh, the Argentport Soldier and the Oni, which is a pretty poor trade for me, I think. Mm. But if I sit around and do nothing, I feel like... I feel like clearing his board is not a bad idea. Yeah. We don't have... Uh, yeah, let's attack him. We don't have too, too many, like, bombs that we can draw and just kind of win us the game in the late game. We That's a good trade. We'll get rid of that unit. Um, it's pretty important because now it makes way for our other units to attack. I mean, in the end, even though it's mine's a 5-5, five, five, it is just trading a 2-power unit for a 2-power... Uh, a 2-casting cost unit for a 2-casting cost unit. Um, so it's not that bad. Um, yeah, we don't have any, like, bombs that we can just slam on the table and just win us the game. That's the problem. We have to manipulate and maneuver the board state into a position where we can overwhelm our opponent. And um, so we're going to have to make some trades, I think. And hopefully we make the trades smartly so that we can stay up, so that we can uh, be on top. Okay. Okay. Um, my opponent's stuck on three power, so it's really bad for him. Um, so I think this is a good opportunity for us to just go nuts. 
Let's go ahead and attack him with the 5-5 five five and prompt a trade. He might double block here or he might just take the 5. Mm. That's just... Mm, okay. So he's trading a unit and a trick. So he has a trick of some kind then? Hmm. Let's play the battle test the stranger. Um, we didn't attack him with this because every time we draw power, these units get better and better. So I'm definitely not going to trade the enlightened stranger for like two of his units now. Um, but as soon as we draw a couple of lands, like he loses, right? So um, he's drawing uh, power now. So he's in a much better shape. He still can't attack us though, because we can definitely double block and kill this with these two. And then, and we don't... Oh, that's good. So the question is... Do I bluff the attack and see what he does? I think the answer is we don't bluff the attack. <laughs> it's not worth it. Let's just go ahead and play the 1-4. Um, we're going to attack him next turn and gain a life, and then play the Beckoning Lumen and draw a card. So I think we are in really good shape here. Uh, we have an overwhelming war position right now, and our opponent, because our opponent got power screwed, and if he's a little bit slower, um, I think we are in very, very, very heavily favored to win this game at this point. Uh, because especially if I'm doing, if I'm drawing two cards per turn, and I have inevitability in these giant units here. Yeah, I think things are going really well for me. My opponent has to have some kind of a very powerful bomb, and even if he does, um, as long as I can ambush it or as long as I can return it back to his hand and buy myself some time, I should be able to still come back uh, on top of this game um, because my board position is really strong right now. But the 4-6 is problematic though um, because if I do attack him with my strangers, I will lose one of them when he double blocks. Okay, so he does have a very good spell. Um, but that's fine. I'll just block it with my 2-1 and trade for his 2-1 there. Uh, there's no issues there. Oh no, I'm lagging, so I'm really hoping that okay so let's play the land first um let's attack him with this uh i can't attack with my stranger ship because he has a six one blocking there um let's play the elder and now i have five power in the air and my opponent's gonna have a really tough time uh stopping five damage per turn and there's no way my opponent can attack me until he draws something good here uh so that's a very good trade uh so now we're, i'm forced to use a good unit to block this and I think that's the reason why he, he did it. Um, I'm actually pretty happy taking 6. None of these units are things that I want to lose. And because he attacked with a 6-1, I'm more than happy to attack him with my units now. So his stranger is also quite large, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, what we'll do here is... Maybe kill his 4-6 with, um, with, a, with a predatory instinct, and then swing in with everything. I think that's what I'll do. Not the 5-3, because I'm still drawing cards off of it, and, uh, and I love drawing cards. <laughs> we are going to trade the stranger here, but then it's fine, because his stranger is getting... Uh, uh, big just like my stranger is so so getting his stranger off the table is fine there we go a silence effect for his um uh, chakram there i think that's going to pretty much end the game for him he needs another bomb and he needs it very quickly that's a pretty good bomb but I can't block it with the Scorpion Wasp, so I think I'll be okay. Oh wait! No! That's a stranger! That's terrible! Oh jeez. Alright. <laughs> I, I, I guess... I'm gonna have to... silence this thing so that I don't take a million damage next turn? Because I have to... Nah, forget it. I'm just going to bounce it to his hand, and then I'm going to silence the 6-1 so he doesn't get his... Um, doesn't get his uh, Steel Fang Tracker back. Well, I'm getting a little bit flooded here. We drew a lot of power over the last few turns. Um, but drawing the Archive Curator was very good. Yeah, we're just going to bounce this. We'll... 
We'll probably block the 6th one with our 1-4 at this point. Uh, the 1-4, it's done its job. Yeah, we're going to bounce this. And then at some point, I'll just take damage from it. Actually, let's ambush it now. Take 7. Go to 7. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with taking 7. I hope he doesn't have a burn spell that does 7 damage, like a flame blast. But he only does 5 damage with a flame blast. Okay. That's okay as well. Um, because we're drawing 2 cards a turn, it's really hard for him to keep up with that. Is it time to attack with this? I can kill his entire board if I attack with this. Um, but I feel like I don't need to make that trade. Both of his units are not good against me. Um, and this unit is very good. So there's no point trading one very good unit with two units that don't matter. The opponent's running out of gas. Uh, it's hard to keep up with someone who draws two cards per turn. So it's only a matter of time now. We're not going to play the second curator. It's going to speed up the clock a tiny bit, but I feel like having another silencing effect in my hand is really good in case he does have an, an amazing bomb that, that he's waiting to drop there. I think here I just go ahead and trade with all three of his units. I think that he dies next turn to the 5-3. I think that's fine. Oh, jeez. Well, that's unfortunate. He's got a good card in his hand. Alright. He has three attackers. I have three blockers. Yeah, pretty safe. So it's just going to go ahead and pass the turn. Because I can still use the envelop if you need to. Uh, next turn he dies, I believe. Because I have enough attackers. Mm, I don't see a reason why I wouldn't make this block. Sure. He's a burn spell, he's a burn spell. Nope, he just attacked for fun. Oh, oops. Oh, I clicked on it, but then I clicked attack too fast. That was really stupid. He's, he, I had him dead on board and somehow uh, screwed it up. Because I didn't click on it. <laughs> You saw that I tried to click on it, right? I think I missed it by like an inch and just clicked it right there and then click attack. Uh, that's brutal. I mean, he's 100% he, he's dead, but that was just a really dumb mistake. Yeah, if our, games, if our deck survives into turn 4, um, we have some pretty good staying power no bombs um but we can play a bunch of one power units onto the board and slowly kill you through uh death by a thousand cuts hmm this whole day um the queue for draft has been very slow. I think maybe this is the time where everyone is at work. While we're waiting, um, somebody on Reddit, I believe his name is Flash, pu uh, published a new article that talks about drafting. Um, he Apparently he did uh, a huge number of uh, data points from people's drafts um, and, 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 you know, deck lists and the records, and then he compiled it and did a statistical analysis on it um and here are the 15 most commonly played cards in draft ever purify at number one number of time played it and this is a win rate modifier that he um that he's calculated using whatever statistical mean that he uses that's basically what this means is um it's this card either increases or decreases your chances of winning a game so by, by playing Purify, 
you actually increase your win rate by 3.2%, which is actually phenomenal. Um, and by playing gun down, you're decreasing your chance of winning by 2.37%, which, uh, um, which is interesting. Basically, what it means is that while this card is played a lot, um, it loses a lot as well. <laughs> Hey, Jank Junction, this, uh, this is the guy that does a lot of um, drafting guides. I've read some of his drafting guides on his website before, and they're excellent. I highly, highly recommend you checking it out. Um, just Google Jank Junction Drafting Eternal, and you'll find it. And um, if his drafting guides are any indication of his playing skills and drafting skills, I can expect this to be a very good game. Uh, I can expect him to have, a, uh, to have a very good deck. I'm gonna add him to my friends after this game so I can talk to him. <laughs> Cause I like this video. I like his uh, articles a lot. Hmm, this is a really good turn of events. It's good is is that this is a three three. Um, it dies to torch and purify still, but it will survive static bolt from blue. So and it also survived lightning storm if he has it. But that's good. Okay, we're gonna ambush that with our wasp at some point. So that's fine. Play a 4 4. We're not gonna leave up mana. Um, he may not attack into me. Um, in which case, we'll just be wasting our lands. Uh, see, see, that's a mistake though, right? He should have. He, if he's not attacking me, if he's not planning to block with this unit, he definitely shouldn't have held it back. He's, he missed a one point of damage. Oh, he's blocking. Oh, well, that makes perfect sense. But man, that's a kind of a waste of a very powerful card. My opponent must be pretty desperate to, um, to do this, because bolster is a pretty powerful card if you have a board position. The fact that he's forced to use this to make this a one four, um, says that my opponent is in some trouble. Hmm. So if I attack him with this, he can't double block because I'll just kill his 1-4. Um, but I can't attack with any of my other units either. That's too bad. So now he's never going to attack me because he's going he's gonna to hold that back in his hand. So I think he, if he's not going to attack me, I'm not going to be able to ambush it with my Wasp. So, so we won't leave up the mana for it. We need to draw power. Oh, perfect. That's what I want to see. So he can eat, he can block this. He'll, so how much damage is he taking? He, he's gonna take 12 from the four drops. He can eat this for free with the three, three for sure. Yeah, this is fine. This will basically mean he dies next turn unless he does something amazing. I'm kind of surprised by that. Those are not the best blocks. Mm. So he only kills my 2-4. Hmm. Because with the way he's blocking, he probably could have killed the 2-4 and the 2-2 together, I'm guessing. But he's at 3, and I have this many attackers. Yeah, I think he blocked wrong there last turn. Okay. Hmm. I'm, I'm curious to see what he has in his hand, um, because I felt like the, the last turn his blocks weren't great, but I don't know what is in his hand, so... And I don't know if he's trying to play around something, but... Eh, anyway, um, yeah, let's go to the next game.